I'm David Hart, Executive Vice President at the Florida Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to another edition of the Florida Chamber's Bottom Line. We have two special guests today, Representative Colleen Burton from Lakeland Thank you. and Representative Edna Rain from Tampa. We're delighted to have you both with us. Thank you for being here. I'm, I'm, I'm delighted to be here, as I'm sure my, my fellow representative is. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for having us today. Thank you. I want to dial the clock back to last summer. You both were first-time candidates in very challenging primaries back home, and you both received Florida Chamber of Commerce endorsements, and we were so proud to stand with two candidates who support free enterprise principles and job growth in Florida. Tell us what your primary and your election looked like. Well, as you said, it was a, it was a challenging time, but it was also, it, it was challenging, but it also gave us, a, a, I speak for myself, it gave me an opportunity to um, make sure that, that my message was very clear to the, the voters in my, in my area. And I was really grateful that the Florida Chamber um, made, a, made a connection with me and my message also. I mean, I felt the support from the Chamber was invaluable. Certainly um, on, the, on the night of my primary, I mean, there was a, were you there? Somebody, I was there you with you. There. Oh. Having you there, just, uh, we were hopeful. <laughs> I, I knew I could win, the, I knew I could win the primary. And to have you there uh, was, was certainly a boost to my um, confidence that, that night to know that you were there and so many others were there locally also, obviously. But having worked with the chamber on initiatives, particularly related to the six pillars process over the years, uh, to know that that connection was strong and, and certainly prepared me to be where I am today. It I appreciated close. that. It was, it was that. close, but you prevailed. Absolutely. <laughs> and Representative Narain, how about you? You also had a very close race in Tampa in your primary. Yes, we had a four-person race back in Tampa, and just like Rep. Burton said, I'm, I'm very proud to be here. I'm also proud to have been supported by the Florida Chamber. Uh, the Chamber was extremely supportive from the very beginning of my race, which was helpful because it got the word out about the type of candidate that I was running in that seat. Um, it was a very difficult race, and we took nothing for granted, and uh, we just continued to work and to know that there were good people that were behind us that were supporting us and were rooting for us from all around the state um, was really really, really helpful. Every time we got tired of knocking on doors, we'd think about the folks that we were actually doing this for, and that was the constituents of the districts who need jobs. And, you know, the Chamber has always been about job growth and job creation, and so our message was always simple. It's about people. It's not about politics. It's not about party affiliation. It's about doing what's right for the people of Florida, and particularly the people of District 61 back home. So I was glad to have the support of the Chamber, and we pulled it off. Let me ask you both how you made the transition. What steps did you take to prepare yourself as first-time candidates, uh, brand newly elected, with very little time to sort of get ready for the big issues that the legislature uh, has in front of them? How'd you, how'd you prepare yourself? Well, you know, during the campaigning process, and, and we all know campaigning is very different from actually governing, um, one of the things that I did is I would take time to learn the issues. Um, the issues that were, uh, of course, important to my district, but also the, the issues that were affecting everyone in the state of Florida. Um, going through the interview process definitely prepared me for it. There were questions there that I wasn't familiar with. You know, even though I have 13 years um, in, in the business community working for a major telecommunications company, uh, I, there were still some issues on there, like the environment, environmental issues you know, with Amendment 1 that I had to go out and actually do research on and learn about. So that was a part of my preparation process. Uh, keeping Representative Reed's staff in place was also a part of the learning process for me because at the, at the end of the day, I'm the only thing that's changed. So our constituents are comfortable with the office uh, because the people that were there are still there, and they've been a great help to me in, in, in guiding me through this, this new process. Representative Burton, how about you? It, Representative Nare mentioned the, the interviews. The questionnaire to prepare for the interview was, fat, was a great learning tool for me because I, it was a great way to study the issues and to prepare mm -hmm. answers and it made, it, there were some top topics on there that I would not have naturally thought would necessarily even be a question I would be asked. I loved, I mean, it was a long questionnaire, but it was, a, <laughs> but that was good. Thorough. It was thorough, thorough. that's the way to put it, it was mm -hmm. thorough. So when it comes to pr thinking about issues that I might not be familiar with, uh, it gave me, you know, an opportunity to, to get up to speed on those. For those issues that I had some familiarity with because of the work that I'd done previously, um, it allowed me to, you know, re-examine in my own mind my, what, wh where I stood on those and what my answers would be for me. 
I love that part of the process. And certainly, I've been a fixture at the Future of Florida Forums, <laughs> I think ever since the first one, uh, because of the work that I had done previously. And luckily, you know, one of those fell into place in, at, an, at an opportune moment for me to go. So when I go to those, what I've always done is sit in on a meeting where they're talking about something that I'm not really familiar with. And I certainly took advantage of that this year. And, and, and like Representative Durain, I have a great staff and I was able to, um, I was fortunate enough to be able to hire in um, a legislative aide who's a veteran in the, in, the, in the business, so to speak, in the process. She came out of retirement to work for me. So that got me off, this, off the ground with a great head start and certainly enabled me to set up my office. Yeah. More, I mean, it's funny that the little details of life that matter when oh. you're a freshman representative are things like, where are we going to be and what are the, where are the desks going to go? Mm -hmm. Just get those things taken care of so you're not worried about them once you get up here. Before we run out of time, I want to ask you both about one policy issue each. And, and one of the special connections we shared with you, Representative Burton, is like the Florida Chamber, you're a passionate voice for fixing Florida's broken legal system and improving our 41st worst ranking. Can you comment quickly on legal reform? Well, interest interestingly enough, um, my reputation or my stand on that particular issue preceded my arrival in Tallahassee. And so um, I had other legislators who would come to talk to me about that issue because they knew I cared about it. And they would think I was, they thought I was an attorney, I had a legal background. I said, let me tell you where I come from because I'm not. For me, this is an economic development issue. It impacts businesses here in Florida. It, it impacts their ability to do business. Um, it costs a lot of money. And that means it costs jobs. And it's important, I'm passionate about that. I'm passionate because it's an economic development issue. So I've I'm honored that leadership and others in the, in the House who've been working on that issue for, for a number of years have, have um, included me in, the, in that conversation moving forward. And I've told them my plan is to be here for at least eight years, for the eight years that I'm able to serve in the House. I want to be part of a solution. I'd like to see a long-term plan for how we're going to get to where we need to get. And that's an issue that's always going to be important to me. So I'm, I'm honored to, to be still be able to work on that. Excellent. And Representative Narain, you've recently uh, taken up the uh, leadership role in sponsoring the Florida Chamber's R&D tax credit bill. Can you give us a quick summary of why, we're, why it needs to be fixed? Well, um, my district is one that's suffering for jobs. We still have unemployment that is almost twice the state average. And so I'm all about bringing quality jobs to the state, and particularly to District 61. So the high skill, high wage jobs that we need to bring in order to bring them to the state, we've got to have some incentives that are going to attract companies that can provide those jobs. And what we saw in years past, particularly last year, was a credit that was at $9 million. And basically within a series of minutes, that credit was gone. Um, amongst the 18 companies that applied for it. So, you know, we're sponsoring legislation that will allow us to double that credit. And uh, if it's more than, you know, 18 companies, hopefully prorate the, the amount that's going to be uh, distributed between those companies, but allow them to have an incentive to come here to do research and development and create the type of jobs that we want people in the state of Florida to have, jobs that they can uh, provide for their entire families with. Well, we look forward to working with you both this session and for many sessions to come. Thank you for being with us today. And to our members, thank you for joining us on another edition of the Florida Chamber's Bottom Line. <laughs>